Today we'll discuss two methods to prove derangement formula and before that we need to establish the definition of derangement and its setup. Now in derangement typically we have n objects and suppose objects are say a1, a2, ai and an and each of the object has its assigned place. Suppose a1 has its assigned place as capital A1, A2 has its assigned place as capital A2, and AI has its assigned place as capital AI, and AN has its assigned place as AN. So we have N objects and N places. In general, when we arrange N objects, in n places it can be done in factorial n ways so total number of ways of arranging these n objects in n positions is factorial n and out of these total factorial n ways there is only one correct way in which a1 is assigned to a1 a2 is assigned to a2 ai is assigned to ai and an is assigned to an so there is only one way in which all of them they are assigned to their correct places. Now when we say derangement, we write derangement of n objects as dn. Basically it is number of ways of arranging n objects in n positions. so that none of the object goes to its assigned place. So when we have such situation, we call it derangement and dn is derangement of n objects. Now there are two ways. To prove this formula, first method is using inclusion exclusion principle. Now, in inclusion exclusion, what we'll do is from total number of arrangements. We will remove all those arrangements in which at least one object is in its assigned place. So from the total, we will remove all those cases in which at least one of them is in its assigned place. Now, For the sake of simplicity, what we will do is we will say this event E1 is when A1 goes to its assigned place A1 event e2 is when a2 goes to a2, ei is when ai goes to ai and en is when an goes to an. So basically this dn it will be total number of arrangements. Now total number of ways of arranging n objects in n places it is factorial n minus at least one object is in its assigned place. So it will be minus n and at least one of e1, e2, ei and en must occur. So at least one of them, a1, a2, an, it is in its correct position. And to solve this expression, we will use inclusion exclusion. Now we know that we can write this as dn equals factorial n minus and this is summation n e i over all i minus summation n e i intersection e j that is two of them they are in assigned places plus three of them they are in assigned places summation n e i intersection e j 
intersection ek and in the end we will have minus 1 to the power n minus 1 e1 intersection e2 intersection en that is when all the objects they are in their correct positions now this is dn equals factorial n minus now first we have this summation n e i now how many such summations are possible we have n elements and from these n elements we have to select one element and it can be done in n c one ways so that one a i element is in a i position and the remaining n minus one objects they can be arranged in n minus one positions in factorial n minus one ways minus now two of the objects a i and a j they are in correct positions now we have to select two objects it can be done in n c two ways remaining n minus two can be arranged in factorial n minus two ways now plus we have to select three now it will be n c three and remaining n minus three they will be arranged in factorial n minus three ways and minus one to the power n minus one this is n c n remaining zero can be arranged in factorial zero which is one now this is factorial n minus n c one is factorial n factorial one factorial n minus one so this factorial n minus one will cancel minus this is factorial n on factorial two factorial n minus two this factorial n minus two will also cancel in the same way this is factorial n factorial three factorial n minus three this also is factorial n minus three will cancel and this is minus one to the power n minus one this is factorial n on factorial zero factorial n factorial zero factorial zero is basically one so we can write this as factorial n minus factorial n upon factorial one plus factorial n upon factorial two minus factorial n upon factorial three and this series will continue and in the end we have this minus one to the power n minus one into minus one so it will be minus one to the power n factorial n upon factorial now what we will do is we will take factorial n common so we can write this dn as factorial n will be 1 minus 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 minus 1 upon factorial 3 up to minus 1 to the power n 1 upon factorial n and another way to write this dn is factorial n and then this summation a varies from 0 to n minus 1 to the power k upon factorial k now this is nothing but this is summation form of this expanded result so this is one way of proving derangement formula now second method of proving derangement formula is using recursive relation We need to find dn which is derangement of these n objects a1, a2, a3, an where positions are a1, a2, an such that no object goes to its assigned place. Now one way of arranging them is let us say first we need to arrange this a1. Now this a1 it should not go to a1 then it can go to any one of these places. So for this a1 we have n minus 1 choices so this a1 it can be arranged in n minus 1 c1 ways for the sake of illustration let us suppose that this a1 it is arranged in a i's place so this place is now occupied it is occupied by a1 so now we have two cases either this a i it goes to a1 or this a i it doesn't go to a1 now 
Now in this first case, when AI goes to A1, so in this first case, when AI goes to A1, A1 has occupied AI's place and AI has occupied A1 place. Now we are left with n minus two elements with their n minus two assigned places and we need to dearrange them. So now we need to dearrange n minus two objects. Now if AI doesn't go to A1, then we have the scenario where we have n minus two elements, A2, A3, An, with their assigned places, where they should not go. And we also have this AI, which should not go to A1. So essentially we have this situation where AI has now its assigned position A1, A2, A2, A3 as A3, and An as An, and none of them should go to their assigned place. So which is derangement of n minus one object. So this is derangement of n minus one object. So we can write this dn as n minus one into now this first case when ai goes to a1 we need to derange n minus two objects and it can be done dn minus two ways plus when ai doesn't go to a1 then we need to derange n minus one objects and which is d n minus one and this is the recursive relation of derangement which we have to use to generate values of dn now in order to generate values of dn we need initial values now if we look at d1 now in d1 we have one object a1 and one place a1 now this a1 can go to a1 so we cannot derange it so basically d1 is zero if we have two objects a1 a1 a2 a2 we have only one derangement possible when a1 goes to a2 and a2 goes to a1. So basically d2 is 1. So now we have initial two conditions. d1 is 0 and d2 is 1. Now we'll use this recursive relation to find a couple of values. We write d3. Now d3 will be 3 minus 1, 2. And this is d1 plus d2. 0 plus 1, so d3 is 2, d4 is 4 minus 1, 3, and then this is d2 plus d3, which is 1 plus 2, 9, d5 is 4 into 2 plus 9, 44. So these are initial few values of d elements, and we can use the values of d element directly. Say for example, we have four balls and they are of red, blue, white and green color and we have four boxes which are also red, blue, white and green. So we have four balls and four boxes. We need to arrange four balls in four boxes so that each box must contain one ball. Now here, total number of arrangements will be factorial 4, which is 24. And of these total arrangement, there is only one arrangement in which each ball goes to its own color box and if the question is find number of ways of distributing these balls so that no ball goes to its own color box then it is nothing but it is d4 derangement of four objects and we know that well of d4 is 9 so in these 24 ways, there are exactly nine ways in which none of the ball will go to its own colored box. Now what we'll do is 
from this recursive form, we'll generate the expanded form. So we have dn equals n minus 1, dn minus 2 plus dn minus 1. What we'll do is we'll write dn minus n, dn minus 1, and it'll be n minus 1, dn minus 2 plus n minus 1, dn minus 1 minus n d n minus 1. Now n d n minus 1 will cancel. So we can write this as dn minus n d n minus 1 and here we'll take minus 1 common we can write d n minus 1 minus n minus 1 d n minus 2. Now if we look closely we have n n n this is n minus 1 this is n minus 1 n minus 1 and this is n minus 2 so this again is same form so we can also write this as minus 1 square dn minus 2 minus n minus 2 dn minus 3 and again it is the same form n is same there is a difference of 1 then again it will be minus 1 so we will eventually get this as minus 1 to the power n. So we can write dn minus n d n minus 1 will be equal to minus 1 to the power n. Now if we divide everything with factorial n, we can write dn upon factorial n minus n d n minus 1 upon factorial n and this is minus 1 to the power n upon factorial n. Now here n will cancel, so we can write this as dn upon factorial n minus dn minus 1 upon factorial n minus 1 and it is equal to minus 1 to the power n upon factorial n. Now in the same way we can write dn minus 1 upon n minus 1 factorial and dn minus 2 upon n minus 2 factorial will be minus 1 to the power n minus 1 upon factorial n minus 1 and will continue and in the end we will have d2 upon factorial 2 minus d1 upon factorial 1 and it will be equal to minus 1 square upon factorial 2. Now if we add them all up it will be this telescopic summation. All these terms, they will cancel. And we know that d1 is 0. So from here, we can write dn upon factorial n. It will be, now this is 1 upon factorial 2. Next one, it will be minus 1 upon factorial 3 plus 1 upon factorial 4. And in the end, it is minus 1 to the power n upon factorial n. Now we can also write this as dn upon factorial n 1 minus 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 minus 1 upon factorial 3 up to minus 1 to the power n 1 upon factorial n and we'll take this factorial n on the right hand side we can write dn equals factorial n 1 minus 1 upon factorial 1 plus 1 upon factorial 2 up to minus 1 to the power n 1 upon factorial n in its expanded form or in summation form we can write this as factorial n this summation k varies from 0 to n minus 1 to the power k upon factorial k which is what we need to prove in this formula.